It's on. Good evening. I would like to call to order the special meeting of the Norwalk Common Council for October 17th at 2022. I'd like to call to order the meeting of the Redevelopment Agency this evening. If you'll join me in standing for the Pledge of Allegiance to our nation. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One Could you please remain standing for a moment? As you know, this past week, uh, two police officers from the Bristol, Connecticut Police Department were ambushed and murdered. Uh, another was wounded. Uh, that's why you see the flags flying half staff throughout the city. I'd like to ask for a moment of silence in their memory. Thank you. Ms. Dixon, if you'll please call the roll of the Common Council. Mr. Burnett. Present. Mr. Goldstein. Ms. Johnson. Ms. Najilski Eichner. Present. Ms. Smith. Here. Ms. Ayers. Here. Mr. Uvelman. Present. Ms. Revoluz. Here. Miss Young. Miss Revoluce is here. Oh, Miss Revoluce. I got you. Miss Young. Mr. Kydes. Here. He's here, but we, he's here. I'm here. Miss McMurr. Present. Miss Alterman. Here. She's also here. Mr. Meek. Here. Mr. Livingston. Here. Ms. Shanahan. Mr. Goldstein. Ms. Johnson. Ms. Young. Ms. Shanahan. We have 11. We have a quorum. Oh, oh. Well, I think it was, um... We have Mary Penniston. Here. Kelly Bloom. Lisa Cooper. Here. David Westmoreland. Here. And myself. We're all present. Yeah, thank you. So we'll have public participation. Ms. Dixon, if you'll bring the signing sheet. No. Uh, Mr. Coppola, there's something acceptance of the call that hasn't been on here before. Um, would you explain what that is, please? Because we haven't had that on any of the agendas in the past. I believe that is with regard to, um, to taking the uh, to taking a vote to go into executive session, um, which is uh, something that you'll do at some point on the agenda. So I. I, I uh, See where it is on the agenda. That was it's got to be after public participation then. Yeah, so you can move you move okay. it to the end if you'd like. All right. Thank you. So now we'll start public participation. Please limit your time to three minutes. Uh, we'll give you uh, a little bit of a signal once you're about 30 seconds out. And obviously there's only one item on the agenda, and you have to stick to items on the agenda for discussion. First speaker, Mr. Mulligan. Milligan. Milligan. Uh, I would call Doom to be first. Pardon me? I would call Doom to be first by using the statement. Mm -hmm. I didn't say that. I said, who is our first? You keep on Zoom right here. It's Zoom. Not that I know of. We don't even know if anybody is on Zoom right now. I know that there are. Okay. Well, first, you're up first. So you're on, You're the one that's here with signed up. So. Well, since there's two meetings, uh, we don't need to have the council. Is it six minutes? No. <laughs> Good evening, Jason Milligan, 11 Belden Avenue, Norwalk. There's lots of talk about following the rules in the city, especially when directed towards me. Uh, and I'd like us all to realize it cuts both ways. I recently obtained and read the Common Council rules. They were adopted in 1985 and recently amended and approved again in June of 2022. Rule 22 states that public participation is encouraged. 
The rules also include a code of conduct for Norwalk Common Council members to adhere to. You should be guided by what is best for their constituents and the city of Norwalk, to encourage and respect the free expression of opinions by stakeholders, to encourage participation of others, to consider alternative, alternate viewpoints and revise opinions as appropriate when presented with new information, and perhaps most importantly, to abide by the city's code of ethics to avoid any conflict of interest before council or committee action and recuse themselves from any discussion or action if appropriate and to abide by the rules of the Common Council. It is a shame that it, I have been censored and that public participation has been discouraged. I've tried for years to have this conversation. Now I get three minutes. I hope it's enough. I am the largest owner of property in the Wall Street area by a wide margin. I spend the majority of my time in and around Wall Street. I'm there six days a week, sometimes seven. I have close to 200 tenants in the area. I'm the largest taxpayer. I've invested millions and millions of dollars into Wall Street. I donate my time and my money to nonprofit organizations working in the area. I have commissioned approximately 100 public works of art in the area. I have a huge personal stake in the Wall Street area, and I want nothing for the best for Wall Street. Mario Coppola is a part-time employee that lives in New Haven County, who also represents a dozen, uh, dozen other cities Mario has been in charge of all the legal decisions for the city for the past eight years. His decisions benefit himself and his favored law firms and are not in the best interest of Norwalk and not in the best interest of Wall Street. His advice has put the city in its position regarding POCO. Mr. Milligan, Mario not, forgave Mr. Ken Olson's Mr. Milligan, numerous defaults. Mr. Milligan, Mario changed the rules and the agreements to try to make POCO work. I don't want to be Mario negotiated the non disclosure agreement that made discussions with McClutchy's secret. The Mr. fact that Milligan. Mario has been in charge of POCO since 2015 and seven years later, it is a complete mess, suggests that someone else should advise the council. Mario has been the sole communicator to the council. The council only hears information that passes through Mario's bias filter. Does Mario want a settlement that would make himself look bad? Who's looking over Mario's shoulder? What recourse is there for Mario's bad decisions? Mario has personal animosity towards me and he has huge conflicts of interest that I will not use my three minutes tonight to discuss. If there is curiosity about those conflicts and any doubt about them, I am happy to have a longer conversation about them anytime, anywhere, with anyone. Mario has recently publicly stated that he is busting at the seams and missing seeing his family because he is so busy. For all those reasons time, and more, Mr. Milligan. it is past time to get a fresh set of eyes involved with Poco. Mr. Mario Milligan, Coppola should really up. recuse himself from Poco entirely, but at the absolute least, there needs to be some independent perspectives and counsel. If you didn't interrupt me, I would have been done. How Mr. can Milligan, members of the Common Council put up. their reputations on the line by allowing Mario to continue making the decisions and filtering all the information. There should be members of the council from both political parties involved at the mediation this Thursday, the 20th. It will be held remotely, so council members should and could attend via Zoom. Mr. If Milligan, we have people involved with up. open minds who seek what is in the best interest of Norwalk, then we will be able to settle the lawsuit at mediation. Thank you for the opportunity to speak, and my God, you didn't have to interrupt me. Well, you have to follow the rules too. You're the one talking about the rules. You're talking about the rules, you have to follow them too. Who's next? Miss Smyrnatopoulos. Miss Smyrnatopoulos. Thank you. Good evening, thank you for allowing me to speak this evening. When the city was being sued by Firetree, I was called to a meeting with Corporation Counsel Mario Coppola to discuss a settlement. It was the winter of 2018. A few minutes into the meeting, it was clear that Mr. Coppola wasn't on the side of the Quintard families. He even argued that drug rehab for 12 and a Ms. resident Bernadette, sound, That's not a topic of discussion for this meeting. It is, if you will no, let me No, you're talking continue. about Quintard Avenue. Excuse me, excuse stuff. me, Mayor. No. I, I, this is not a good look for you to be I'm trampling sorry. on the rights of citizens. I am following the rules and talking I am going to- on the agenda. It is on the agenda. Okay, we'll give Please you let me- chance. Go ahead. Let me read what I have written. It is about the lawsuits of this city. They are all tied together. Mr. Coppola even argued for drug rehab and for 12 in a C resident zone was the same as rehab for 20 persons. The city spent over half a million dollars with Halloran and Sage fighting the fire tree lawsuit and another $600,000 to settle it when they could have bought the property for $1 million and made the neighborhood whole again. So why didn't the city just buy the house? Ask Mario. 
A short time later, it was announced that Ventura Law had been retained by the city to represent Norwalk in the opioid lawsuits. Ventura had taken on Ed Camacho as a partner in August of 2017. Camacho was also chair at the time of both the Democratic Town Committee and the Board of Estimate and Taxation, as well as personal lawyer to the mayor. The prelude to the Ventura retainer was the formation of a three-person committee, Michael Corsello, Richard Bonifant, and Mario Coppola, to choose a law firm to represent the city in opioid litigation matters. The committee interviewed three firms, two of which were non-conflicted. They chose the firm with the conflict of interest. They chose Ventura. When I read about the Ventura retainer, retainer, I saw a city compromised by multiple conflicts of interest. Surely, I thought, once the right people were made aware of these COIs, we would correct course. So I can file a complaint with the Board of Ethics. And when I began to dig deeper, I discovered that it wasn't simply the choice of Ventura that was an ethical dilemma for the city. The role of Mr. Coppola in choosing Ventura, it turned out, was the bigger problem. I collected evidence implicating Mr. Coppola in steering his committee to recommend Ventura to the Common Council over the other two non-conflicted choices. I submitted that evidence to the Board of Ethics via the Law Department because there was no other place to share it. That envelope was sealed with tape, signed across the seal and marked confidential. And Mr. Coppola opened that envelope because he could, because Mr. Coppola was and still is liaison to the Board of Ethics. Mr. Coppola chose Ventura. Corsello went along for the ride and Bonifant was bypassed in that decision. Later during executive session, when Mr. Bonifant tried to warn the council about the conflict of interest, he was shut down by Mr. Coppola. Mr. Livingston, you were on the council when that vote was taken. And Mr. Najelski Eichner, you were on the board of ethics that chose to You're not pursue that case populace. because there was no probable cause. From minutes. the mosque settlement to fire tree to Ventura to Poco, the city leans on one man, Mario Coppola, for legal advice. Mr. Coppola also apparently serves as personal lawyer to the mayor, but the real benefits to this cozy arrangement accrue during campaign season when all those law firms we lean on to represent the city and our various legal entanglements, law firms who make millions at our expense, open up their wallets and give to the mayor's reelection campaign. Anyone who's ever done anything involving a lawyer knows that a conflict of interest is something we are meant to either avoid or disclose. Doing neither is wrong, Please it's unethical, it but the law department under Coppola is buried under conflicts of interest. It's time for the council to put an end to the POCO mess. Yes, I'd love for Mario to devote his energies full-time to helping rich people in Greenwich avoid affordable housing, but I know that's a big ask. And I'm not sure the mayor would know how to get along without him. Ms. But at least recognize that up? the time to move forward would on Wall Street is long up? past and that there is nothing to be gained by a trial please and that we're not only up. tired of looking at the Tyvek Temple, we are also tired of paying the legal bills. Thank you. We're going to have to insist that people take stick to three minutes, please. Who's next? Is there anybody on the Zoom that wished to, to address the council? I'm sorry? Hello, I've been unmuted. David, go ahead. Hi, thank you very much. Uh, he's, yeah. Thank you for hearing me. First, I have called the attorney, uh, Mr. Uh, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm Jason Milligan's attorney and, and, uh, I have COVID, so bear with me. Um, I have the brain fog that comes with COVID, but there are a few things that I wanted to say, and I will stick to the three minutes. <laughs> I think it's important that the council understand a few things here. And I'm not doing this as an advocate. He's trying to. Can, we, yeah. Can you not hear me? No. Oh. You let me know when you can hear me. Can you hear me? Not yet. Okay. I'm sorry. I like my remarks to the editor for minutes. I have a copy from the system. Well, yeah, you can make a copy and send them or, yeah. 
however you want to do it. Can you hear me? <laughs> That's warm right here in the news. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. That's warm in here. Not really usual. No good. Well, you do have all the hoodies. I was trying to get home to get dressed, and I just had no minutes. Yeah, my honor, my Larry Manzins. Not here. Oh, can you hear me? Mayor. Mayor. Hello. I can hear you guys on WhatsApp. I don't know if they could hear us over there. Diana, you can hear me, right? Yeah, I could hear you and I can hear the I don't think they speaking. can hear us. Mayor? I can hear you guys too. Can Mayor? You, can you can you hear me? I can hear you. Yes, Dan, I can hear you. Those that are on or, or, or that are not in the room cannot they can't hear us, David. <laughs> okay. Well you tell me what I what you know I I, I, I don't know. I'm gonna try and see if I can reach somebody because uh, I'm talking here. and they can't hear us. John. I texted Barbara, but I didn't get a response. Let me call you back to her. Yeah, I'm going to call. Call. Oh, no, 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 no. You, you can't hear us. Correct. But, but you can't hear the folks that are on, um, that are, Zoom. that are on Zoom at all. Correct. Okay, you can't, okay. Oh. Okay, so you can't hear any of us, but we can hear all of you. Okay. Okay, yes. perfect. So hopefully we're going to get that fixed. Okay, perfect. Okay, bye. Okay. Yeah, they said that they couldn't hear us either. But what are Darlene. they waiting on? No, the IT to help because okay. they can't hear us and we can't hear them type of thing. Okay. That's weird. Isn't it? Yeah. Call anybody's name. They can't hear us. <laughs> <laughs> What y'all doing? No, I'm just joking. <laughs> um, How are you, Heidi? I'm good. I'm in uh, I'm in Boston with uh, my cousin and her new husband. <laughs> oh, nice. Otherwise, I at some point I'll try to come back to in person, but um, I'm just out of town right now. 
Yeah. Guys, yeah, the newborn. Same thing gets kind of hard for me, even though I'm in the building, you know? Yep. Uh, newborn. That's all I'm going to say. Newborn. That's all you have to say. You don't even have to say. <laughs> Although she's 12 weeks now. So oh, wow. She, yeah, so I think she's officially out of newborn and just a baby. But she's still... 12 weeks is still a newborn, okay? <laughs> that's true. She's definitely breastfeeding. But, <laughs> okay. but right, that's still a newborn, right? Okay, okay, cool. Because time goes by fast. It does. Hug them and hold them and love them. That's what you do. I know, I know. Such a lovey. And how are you since you're asking everyone? I hope you're well as also. You know, I'm getting old. Oh, me too. <laughs> I'm with you. But you but just like fine wine, no, just oh, like oh. fine wine. Yes. Just like fine wine. <laughs> this real quick. You guys know, even though they can't hear us, like, will we appear on the recording? Yeah, I think we can be heard, right? Okay. And we're being recorded, so they're, they're, yeah. they can hear, we can hear each other. Yeah. And I think all the people that are on, and we can all hear each other. Apologies for technical difficulties, guys. Yes, I just received the confirmation that you're a hundred percent right, Darlene. People could hear us, just in there can't hear us. Right. Yeah. Good thing we weren't sharing any trade secrets, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> I was, in, I was on mute talking, exactly. <laughs> but you do you guys have gallery too? So I could see everyone. It's just really on mute. Like it's seriously on mute. But you yeah, could see them. Like Barbara tried to talk a moment ago and
Whenever you're ready. Wonderful. Okay. It's 7.16 and we are out of recess. And the next speaker will be called. Mr. David Rubin. Um, hello, can you see me or do you wanna see me? We can see you. Okay, great. Um, thank you for the opportunity to be heard. Um, initially, just please bear with me. I have COVID and I have a brain fog. So anything that, you know, just, just be aware of that, please. Um, I'm, I'm here to use my three minutes for purposes of talking about mediation in general uh, and the benefits of, of what is available to everybody on Thursday. And also a couple of updates on the litigation, just to make sure everybody's aware. Uh, initially, I've been practicing for 30 years and I don't think I've ever had a case where both sides, the cost and the expense for both sides is so disproportionate to what is being fought over. That's people's rights, it's municipalities' rights, it is what it is, um, but I'm a huge proponent of mediation. I've been asking for mediation in this case for years, and I'm very pleased that the court ordered that the mediation proceed. Um, over the course of the last two weeks, uh, the court entered an order that I think it's important for everybody to understand. We had moved for a jury trial. The city and the RDA opposed the jury trial. The court two weeks ago granted the jury trial on all issues. Um, I tell you that just because it's important to understand that if anybody tells you that they know what a jury is going to do, they've never tried a case in front of a jury. Uh, this is a case that is a huge problem that is crying out for a solution. And, in, in, and I've told Jason the same thing that I'm saying to you here. Mediation is a real opportunity. It provides finality. Uh, unlike a jury, you control your own destiny. And I would very much encourage uh, as many of you who could take an active role or just be aware of what is being discussed on Thursday to involve yourself to that end. Um, secondly, this is not a, right now this case is supposed to be tried in March and April. It, I could be wrong, I'm wrong all the time. I don't, I don't think that this case is going to be tried in April. Um, the, the, the city and the RDA just lost a motion for summary judgment against the Olson widow who has appealed. That appeal is going to take a year. Uh, Olson widow is not going to want this case tried without her because obviously she's not going to want to have to retry the case if she loses the appeal. And I am going to oppose the case going forward in a trial now because I need to know whether the Olson widow is a party or an empty chair. The city said she's an indispensable party to this litigation. And now she's out of the litigation because the city didn't commence within the statute of limitations, according to the judge. Mm -hmm. I say that for the purpose of mediation has finality and 
the time and money and additional money that is going to be spent on this case over the next year and a half is astronomical. You're over th uh, three minutes, Mr. Rubin, if you could start to wrap it up. Uh, thank you very much. I appreciate that, Mayor. I will wrap it up. Um, I, I, that's it. That's it. Um, please take the mediation seriously. It is in everybody's best interest. Thank you. <laughs> next. We have a Kristen Hudak uh, as sitting in there. I don't know who that would be. Whoops. Hey, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. How are you guys? It's good to hear this chat. It's good to be involved. Um, my only uh, really. Uh, could, could you wait one minute? Uh, we're still in public session. Uh, did you sign in or how? I just got the link. I live here on Wall Street. I'm a participant. I live here. That's how I got the link. Okay, well, we're going to go through particip public participation. Then if you wish to speak, you can raise your hand. Thank you. Yeah, I, okay. Did I call? Uh, oh, yeah. Yes, and just uh, for the record, uh, Brian Meek, uh, Councilman Meek, left the meeting at seven ten. Um, the next speaker is Peyton Turner. Thank you. Hi, everybody. I'm Peyton Cosell Turner. I'm a homeowner in Norwalk, and I also have a business in Norwalk off of Knight, off of Wall Street on Knight Street. And I've been hearing a lot about how much Milligan Realty loves and supports Wall Street, but I don't see that in my daily drive to my office. Um, I see empty storefronts. I see what I personally feel is a bad use of a lot of amazing, amazing opportunities for small businesses and, and different, you know, all different kinds of businesses to move into the area. And I think a lot of people are looking for commercial space to run their businesses. But, you know, as someone who spends a lot of money every single month on renting, I sort of regret moving to that area because of what I see, empty storefronts what seems like spite litigation that's gone on for way too long. Um, but I don't believe that's the fault of the city of Norwalk actually. So I am just here to voice my concern and say that part of me wishes I had gone to, you know, either a different area of Norwalk or maybe even a neighboring city. And I hate feeling that way. So um, I'd really like, you know, something to happen. Thanks. Thank you. Next is Mark Allen. Hey, everybody. Um, you know, sometimes I do speak for the Wall Street Neighborhood Association, but in this today, I don't feel it would be appropriate to project my own beliefs on the members of the association. So I'm here speaking for myself. As a business owner in the Wall Street area, uh, we're at 16 Isaac Street, we're a factor in the now studio. I will say this. I do remember the day that Bob Duck first came to my studio. We were very excited about that. But I remember we were embarrassed by how the parking lot looked. This is before Jason bought the lot. The tree, one of the trees in our lot was overgrown so much. We sent our interns out to try to clean up the lot. One of the trees was overgrown so much, we didn't realize that there was a homeless person living underneath the tree. That's how bad it was. The lot was disgusting. There was a van in the lot that was, the girls in our studio called the Raper Van, they were afraid to go near it. And we tried to get the police to come and respond. And they couldn't, they said, there's nothing that we could do. Uh, when Jason bought the lot, he cleaned it all up, I will say that. Jason, we all know, is a pain in the ass. Sorry to say that. Um, something that I would say is this, 
but but he's been he's done a lot of good in the Wilshire area I will say he's really really cleaned up our area a lot and with all due respect um, to um, flat vernacular um, there are a lot of new businesses that have opened in the Wall Street area in places that had been empty, like my three sons. Um, I think there, there have been a lot of businesses that have opened uh, in properties that Jason owns and has redeveloped. So prior, to, uh, prior to purchasing my three sons building, 64 Wall Street was empty for years. And uh, by contrast to you got the elite who owns um, the place that, uh, on Wall Street, the place she owns, that's been empty for 12 years. It's been long since redeveloped. No business is going in there. You got, you got 84 Wall Street where the health club was. When I came to Wall Street 12 years ago, that was empty and it's empty today. They don't want to rent that place. CG, uh, CGS Capital in Stanford owns that building. A2 Ballet, the other place that owned Wall Street, they don't want to rent it. It's been chronically empty. Jason is the only one buying properties in Wall Street where we have new businesses open. And I just want to say, I truly believe that everybody in this room wants the best for Wall Street. And I'm not here just to sing Jason praises. I'm just saying, I do believe that everybody in this room wants what's best for Wall Street. And I think that Come Thursday for mediation, I think that's the best way forward for us all to get to move the ball forward. That's really all I have to say is that please take the mediation seriously and please help us move forward. Thank you, Mr. Allen. Thank you. Next is Brian Casper. Hello, this is my first time talking at a city council meeting, so my nerves are getting the best of me. But I think it's my duty as a citizen of Norwalk to make my voice heard. <clears throat> um, again, my name is Brian Casper. I'm a Norwalk citizen, property owner, and also a business owner in the Wall Street area. Um, I do not claim to be an expert on real estate law, zoning, et cetera, et cetera, nor the past events of what got us to this point. Um, I agree with Mark that I think everybody wants the best for the Wall Street area for the COCA development, et cetera. Um, however, at this point, I think it's unimportant for me to even know all of those past issues because we're so entrenched. Everybody's been digging their heels in so heavily. Um, we're here now in the past of the past and it cannot be changed. It is clear that this developer is not interested in compromise or solutions that are based in any sort of reality that doesn't serve his own interests. Unfortunately, the time for compromising and finding a mid middle ground is over. The city, the city council, and Mr. Mayor should begin to explore options that facilitate progress with this development that don't involve this development, basically just feeding into his ego. I believe that there has got to be a way forward. I fully believe in interesting design solutions to figure things, problems like this out. The Wall Street area is in a state of stagnation because of this endless spat that amounts to nothing more than an ego contest. I also agree with Mark Allen that a lot of things have moved into the Wall Street area, but there's also been a high turnover. This developer claims to be interested in the, the betterment of the Wall Street area and his actions prove otherwise. He's basically getting in his own way. Unfortunately, uh, he won't stop until he wins. And any solution that's considered a win by him are not a success for Norwalk, the Wall Street area, or its citizens. The unrelenting stubbornness of this developer is only hurting his own business and the success of his tenants, his own tenants, people who are paying his bills. The city council and mayor railing have responsibility to its citizens and not one developer who pays taxes in another city. That's basically all I'm saying. Thank you. Thank you. Roosevelt Pobar. Hello, but accent. Sorry. 
So I am a business owner in Wall Street. I live in Norwalk for about seven years. I know pretty much Norwalk. Um, I didn't know the mayor, but I assume everybody that is seated here is for one single thing and purpose in common to help us, the people of Norway. So I don't know what problem I saw this lady opening a bag, going outside saying, no eating. This argument hurts and make you feel angry, but it's true. Some people, they might make arguments that make you feel angry and this person doesn't deserve my apologies. But everybody's human being and make mistakes. I just wanna ask you for something. Think about the people of Norwalk. I have a business. And if this lawsuit doesn't solve, doesn't get resolved or settled soon, we are suffering in the middle. We struggle. I opened exactly the same month that was about locking down not, um, actually Norwalk or the whole Connecticut. So it's the worst place, the worst time. And we struggle so far to be open. Now we are open, but we are still you to be open to this conversation and help us. Don't help Milligan, don't help yourself, just help us. Think about the middle, think about the people that are in the bottom. It's me, it's so many more people like me. I'm sorry that this is coming to you, but I'm really sure that you're a really good person. And you understand my point. Thank you very much. Thank you. Chris, Kristen Hada. Hey, thank you. Thank you for giving me a chance to speak. Um, but just, yeah, it's, it's nice to hear what you guys have to say. It's nice to hear what the people of the community and like in our neighborhood have to say. Um, but yeah, I mean, I Mulligan makes a point. Um, you guys make a point, but it's not, the street is not fun to live on uh, with the lack of, you know, vitality. Like we I compare it to Sono, there's so much going on. I just compare it to other things and there's not a lot going on. I don't feel safe. I've lived here since January of 2019 uh, by myself as a woman, and I don't feel safe in the streets here in Norwalk and on Wall Street. So it's unfortunate. Um, and just we need more activity and we need more clarity um, and things to, you know, things to move forward and not just talk, as all this talk, but move forward. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Is there anybody else online that's waiting to speak? Is there anybody else in the audience who has not signed up but would like an opportunity to speak? Please step forward and state your name for the record and your address and we'll log it here. Excuse me, I'm very nervous. Okay, so I'm not used to doing this. But my name is Doreen Lee Grand. I live on 19 Isaac Street and I look at the Tyvek Temple building every single day. I bought that condo with my late husband in 2004 with the hopes and dreams that Wall Street was going to be up and coming. It was going to be beautiful with all these drawings and all these plans. For 10 years, nothing was done. Finally, they started. Unfortunately, whoever was building that, I don't know why they were able to go so high on one corner because seeing where those buildings were, I had no idea how bad it was going to be. I have to look at that every single day. It blocks my view. It blocks everything that I've ever seen before there. The businesses that were there fell apart, most of them, because once that building went up, there was no parking. No one wants to park in that parking garage that's over there. It's unsafe. It's not what, I know you have plans to fix it now, but you have plans to fix something that's going to take another two to three years, okay? I understand Milligan wants to help, but I don't think he's helping as much as he wants to help because it's stalling. It's just keeps stalling and stalling and stalling. No one wants to make a decision for the people who live there who have to look at that every single day. 
who have who I'm paying taxes, okay, to look at something that can never be fixed. And now to hear that there might be another year and a half before you even make a decision, it's disheartening. It really is. So I've been there for so long to see everything just go down. Those businesses that are there now, they're not going to survive because the parking is ridiculous. We have to pay in order for them to go run into a store to pick up something. It's not like it used to be. You could put a frigging coin in a, in a meter and let somebody go in. Now it's outrageous. Most of those people are older. They don't use phones, cell phones. They don't know. They're afraid to go downtown. There's a lot of different things that could happen. It could be better if you would all just, just get off your high horses, okay? Come down and realize that the people that are living there are suffering. And it's not acceptable anymore. It's going on too many years. If it was your neighborhood or if it was you living there, how could you keep looking at that day in and day out and hoping for something? I'm still there trying to, I'm struggling to pay my bills so that I can see what's going to happen. But who knows if I'm ever gonna see that? It's so sad, it really is. I don't know what the solution is, but you just need to come down and come think about what you're doing and how long you're prolonging this. It's been years and years. That building looks like it's gonna fall down. And then what? Do we wait to start up again? And you're now, at three, three minutes and 25 seconds if you can okay, start to wrap you. it up. I, just, I can go on forever because this is really, really sad. So I hope you all are listening, listen to the people that are there. It, it's just too much. So thank you. Thank you. Jordan, is there anybody else online? Uh, would you come down and state your name and address for the record? Hi, my name is Ava Jacobs, uh, 83 Washington Street. I'm a homeowner in Norwalk, and I also work at 67 Wall Street, so right next to the Tyvek Temple. Uh, I think the biggest thing coming from everybody in the general area is it's just not safe. Uh, it's falling apart. It's falling into our back alleyway where we work. Uh, my boss and Mark and other people in the area offer to walk me to my car at night because it's not lit. You know, it's just, it's not a great area. I broke my foot over there because of things just not being in a good state. Um, so I think we're all just really looking for an end, you know, for this to go on for another year. Just doesn't seem right for the people who spend every day in that area. It's really... It's not fun. That's not great. So, that's it. Thank you. Jordan, is anybody else uh, signed online? Anybody else in the audience wish to address the council? Looking around, I think everybody in the audience already has. So, um, we'll close public participation. Thank you all for taking your time. Mr. President, I turn the floor over to you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to make a motion for this council to go into executive session for the purpose of receiving, uh, uh, discussing and giving an update on litigation titled City of Norwalk and City of Norwalk Redevelopment Agency versus ILSR Owners LLC at all. Docket number XO8-FST-CV-18-603. Eight two four nine S S, which is currently pending in the Stanford Norwalk Judicial District at Stanford. I call, uh, yes. All in favor of the motion of going into executive session from the council. Aye. Okay, um, Mr. Oh, motion. Quick. quick. We've closed for public participation. We just make, did, did he have his hand up during? All right, we'll hold on for a Okay. This will be the last speaker. Quick question while holding, has a link been sent for executive session? Hi there, can everybody hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, this is Ethan. I'm over at Factory Underground and I, I, I piped in a little late with the meeting, but uh, 
you know, I just, I just wanted to say regarding the area, I mean, we've had a great day here. We had Chris Sarandon here, Susan Sarandon's husband from Princess and the Bride. I just spent two and a half hours with Wes Brown, who's, you know, a, a pretty, you know, a, a pretty big film star. And this is kind of an average day over here at Factor Underground. It's, we're bringing a lot of notables into this area. Uh, anybody from Scott Foley to uh, Susan Sarandon and her daughter frequent here. And, um, you know, Jose Feliciano's here probably every other week. And we also have a, a, a tech school here that we've been developing. And, you know, in, in regards to the area, you know, it's, it would certainly help <laughs> if we could, uh, if we could uh, basically address you know, some of the, I don't, I don't know what you want to call it in the area, but just some of these buildings that are unfinished. And, uh, you know, we've, we've been in business here for over, I don't know, maybe 13 to 15 years. I've been in this building for almost 20 years now. It'll be 20 years, uh, you know, this next January where, where I've been here. And um, I think, uh, you know, it, you know, with the, it, it's been amazing what we've been able to do as a business to bring some of these, you know, these great entertainers and musicians to this area. And I think it's a great, you know, a great look for Norwalk to have a, a business like ours that's able to draw that kind of attention. And, you know, having the, the area not, it, it's just been like this for so many years now. And I, I will say this, you know, the parking lot, when we were trying to develop this business was just filled with with chain link fence and, and garbage for many years, you know, uh, Jason has taken over the parking lot and has helped helped develop a, a, at least a, a, an area that looks nice now. And I'm not sure what's really happening. I, this has been something that I've really wanted to look into more as as a, a person that runs business here. But why why is it things not getting finished in the area? Why why does it look like it looks? You know, we we want to stay here. We want to be here. But it, it makes it tough when you're starting to bring people like this in and it looks, you know, the, the area does not look like an area that's successful. It looks like an area that's just confused. Is, 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 there, anybody, is, is there a resolve for it? I mean, I don't, you know, I've been out of the loop with a lot of things, but is this, this meeting is to help, is, is the idea of this meeting to, uh, to help speed that process up to resolve, you know, the, the lack of development and, and the lack of, I, I guess, the accomplishment of what's happening with these buildings. Is that what the, the idea of this meeting is? You're at three minutes and three seconds. Yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm asking a question. No, we understand that. Generally, this is not a back and forth question. Period. Okay, yeah, this is my first time doing something like that. But I mean, right. I guess that, that's it. That's about it. You know, we're bringing a lot of great people. Our student base is, uh, is, is growing. And we, we would like to see the area, you know, get finished and wrapped up. And, you know, it's, it's going to help everybody. What we're bringing down here is it's going to help the restaurants. You're, you're Speaking of wrapping minutes. up, you're at three minutes and 35 seconds. I'm good to go. Thank you. Thank Harry. you. Okay, that concludes public participation. We have a meeting, uh, a motion that's been passed by the council, and now I make a motion on behalf of the Norwalk Redevelopment Agency to go into an executive session to discuss an update on litigation titled "City of Norwalk and City of Norwalk Redevelopment Agency versus ILSR Owners LLC at all." Second. Second. All in favor? Unanimous. Okay, the council and the redevelopment agency are now going into executive session. You know, we have one, two, three, two. Can't we just stay here, Mary? I'm simply had to stay here. We're sending the executive okay. session. You're ready, Diana. I sure am. There you go. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Diana wants to hear. Diana, don't you have a baby there? I'm glad you're back. <laughs> Thank you. And yes, I do. Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Sing break. We need Diana for the last motion. Yeah, we do. Not that I don't want to sing. That's your job. <laughs> In that order. <laughs> Four or five. We lost all that. Yeah, we need Nora Greg. Well, you got six with Diana. Um, well, we had a, we had a quorum. We don't need a quorum anymore, right? Probably not, because we're not making, it, making any votes. Here. You're Darlene right. song. Darlene Diana. Okay, we are, are we on? Yeah. Okay, we are now back in public session. It is 9.31 p.m. During executive session with the council, the council made no mo motions and no votes were taken. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> my turn. No, I'm just joking. Hold on. I forgot I was on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. The redevelopment agency came out of executive session. During the session, no votes were taken or motions made. May I have from the council a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Revolution makes a motion to adjourn. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Okay. Okay. Development have a motion to all in favor. Yeah. Aye. Thank you. Good night, guys. Good night. Good night.